Happy Friday, community. My name is Genesee from Good Shepherd Entertainment, and we're here with an old favorite of yours, Danielle. He was seen, did some really cool things last time running through the world. And today uh, he's here to answer your questions and play a little more of the game editor, which is kind of like the backstage of the game. So welcome, Danielle. Glad to see you here. Hi, guys. Glad to be here again. <laughs> Yay. All right. So we're going to start with our Discord contest. We have a wonderful community in Discord. And this week, we asked them to use three random colors, which were provided by our Discord bot. So they went into the channel, got their random colors, and they were asked to make, to design a tribum using just these three colors. So here are our winners. The first winner is SMJ James. Uh, and maybe you can show their yep. cool yes. tribum. Yeah. Look at that. What do you think of the trunk there? Yeah, it's pretty cool. I think that's the toxic trunk. Yeah, it mm -hmm. looks like it. Yeah, yeah. I love nice. the white eyes. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I see you. Yeah, good All mix right. of colors. OK, next one. Next one is Tintan. And this is a really soft looking, beautiful trebum named Gui. Yeah, I really Gui. like the shading on it. Very nice. Looks so happy. Doesn't know about the cylinder. <laughs> <laughs> and our third winner is Labus with their cylindrical trebum called Vol. Hmm. That's cool too. <laughs> it was cool. I like the feet. Little sideways toes. And yeah. we have honorable mention of Shattered Reality. So this was super hard to pick, you guys. You did a great job at Discord. So many good choices. All right, so now, Danielle, show show what you want to show, and I will pepper you with the questions from Discord while you do that. OK. Basically, what I wanted to do this time was show some of the tools that we use to put together the world of the Eternal Cylinder. And one of those tools uh, is this called the World Definition Editor. Uh, this is basically where we um, define the predefined parts of the world like these colors that you can see in the background are the uh, biome information so basically this uh, sort of reddish brown color is the savanna the blue there would be the water uh, this uh, light brown color would be the desert the white is the snow and basically Ooh. each tile uh, can have uh, different biomes in it, like the corners uh, define which biomes they are. Like, as you can see, this one right here that I'm highlighting has a bit of water in it and some savanna. So that would be what we call a coastline tile. So it, it basically has uh, a sort of l shape coast and and that's how we build sort of the the large bodies of water and these these colors here that you can see on the edges of each tile uh, is basically what what defines the um, the shape of the terrain at at the edge there and they have to match because otherwise you would have like a really ugly seam uh, between the tiles so Whoa, this is its own game <laughs> yeah uh what we did was we we started with a, a concept that's called wang tiles that uh, basically you have tiles that can have colored edges and that color can mean anything that you want and and in our case what we decided was that we would have two colors um so if if you only had one color, all of the tile edges would have the same shape. So you would start to notice a lot of uniformity in the terrain. Uh, so we, we decided to limit it to two, so we didn't have to do too much work, but we also had uh, reduced the, the problem of, of two uniform uh, colors. And we also allow the the tiles to rotate so uh, these the edges have to be symmetrical I'm, I'm going to open up one of the tiles so you can see what i what i mean uh 
a little simpler. <laughs> Please bear with the loading because Unreal uh, is pretty slow, but. I'm gonna ask you questions about loads. Here's one. Okay. Uh, this is probably something when you can show later. Uh, I'll save it. It's about the red spheres. So how about this one? Saramos asks, what's your favorite thing in the game? For example, they like the mechanics. Um, oof, that's a tough one. <laughs> I really like so many aspects of the game. But I guess if I had to sum it up to one thing, it would be like the overall feeling of it. Like, it, it, I think it actually... Uh, feels like a world like it actually makes sense it doesn't feel too much like a game of course it is a game and, and it mm -hmm. has to have game mechanics but it, it, it actually feels like a world that's lived in awesome okay here's one from SMJ James and this will be something you can see right here in the editor what are those red spheres lines emanating from objects do they represent fields of vision but it seems like some of them are objects rather than creatures oh that's that's a good one because I have some red lines up right at this moment um, it depends basically uh, the the lines are basically collision shapes but they can be used for many different things. Like you can use them to detect uh, maybe a proximity to something. Like uh, maybe this this uh, what's what's its name? I forget the omnigram. Uh, this omnigram here has these two uh, red spheres. Well, they change color when they're selected. Uh, this is basically for proximity detection like when when a trebum is close by it will um, start growling at this distance and and when you get close enough then it opens up and starts chasing you i forget if this is if we're still actually using them for for that purpose because we we had uh, the the omnigram is one of the creatures that was first built so it was built as a part of the prototype and then we we started making up these more sophisticated systems uh, for the creatures to perceive the world so it, these might be just a legacy thing but for instance you can also see here like uh, a little capsule shape near the the bottom of the the omnigram mm -hmm. and that's basically used to push the trebum uh, when it opens up. Like if you stand near the legs when it opens up, it actually knocks you back. And that's done with these oh. capsule things right here. And there are also other things that can be used for. Like for example, here you can see the this little uh, I forget what this plant is called, but it's the one that you use to sort of incubate the eggs. So you can um, see that it has this T equals 25 there, and that's basically a temperature volume. So that's what, what's actually heating up the egg uh, when you put, there, put it there. They're asking about, quote unquote, the satellite dish looking thing behind it. Something audio looking there. With satellite the check mark. dish. Oh, that? Yeah. this like this, if you get close to the right behind the tree yeah that yeah the, this is the um, it's basically a, an ambient sound oh i can play it yeah that's what it is okay uh oh okay so going back to what i wanted to show you here opening this up is um that all of the tiles in the game have this sort of predefined edges. And I don't know if you can see it clearly, but the the shape that it has is symmetrical, which means that if you um, sort of cut it by half and, and mirror it, it's the same shape. And the reason we do that is because um, you can rotate any of these tiles and and they have to match up with the same edge shape uh, rotated 180 degrees. So 
you don't see any ugly cuts. And an, another thing that you might notice here is that I said that we only have two different edge shapes, which is the, the red and the green, but we also have a blue and a sort of magenta lines there. And the blue lines are actually uh, sort of custom edges. We, we have things called mega tiles that are sort of pre-made sets of tiles that are built uh, precisely to fit together with only those tiles. Like, so basically uh, the large um, mountains, mountain ranges that you see in the world are usually mega tiles. Um, specific story areas are built using mega tiles. And what that allows us to do is that within a mega tile, these blue edges can be any shape. And the only condition is that the shape has to match up between the tiles. So Hugh Lynn in hmm? chat is asking about what you're showing right now. Asking, um, so the world levels are all hand designed and how does procedural generation come in with what you're kind of showing us? Uh, yeah, uh, the procedural part of the game is not actually like building a tile procedurally, but rather filling the space using the tiles that are pre-built. So as, as you can see here, not all of the world is predefined. Only some parts of it are. So basically um, the rest of the world is filled in using the, the tiles that we have. And the, they have to just um, fulfill the conditions that are set by by the biomes and by whatever we preset by hand. So yeah, it, technically all of the parts of the world are built by hand, but the world itself is not. Sarmas Panchi was asking what the blue sort of kind of curvy barriers are that are between those sections there. Oh, uh, that that would be the, um, the I, I forget what the in-game name for it is, but I guess you would call it the, the safe boundary of the towers. So basically if okay. you, yeah. yeah, this is like a row of towers and those little yellow squares there uh, are the the towers that you can activate. And yeah, that, that way we define what the range of the safe area would be in that row. And I can change it here to make it bigger or smaller. And I can I also... P for power up. Sorry? Is P for power up? P for so power up. They got T. Oh, got no, T the... for tower. What's P? <laughs> yeah, actually the T is not for... <laughs> yeah, it's not, <laughs> it's not for tower. The T is for Tom Cave. <laughs> which is uh, sometimes you can see like these little cave entrances with some glowy particles. Okay. Uh, so it's like the underground caves that you can enter, but w when you're in the normal world, not, not like going into an elder cave or, and we nicknamed those Tom caves because the, the designer who built them is called Tom. So that's what the T is for. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and the P is for pyramid. So yeah, that, that's where the pyramid, the, the first pyramid in the game is. Uh, I think the R is for recipe shrine, and this G here is for gather spot, which is where you can sort of send Trebon to the cloud and and recall them later. There you go, guys. All the letters. I see you like asking a second after he's answered it. Yeah, low chat's a little slow compared to the live, but yep, you've got them all now. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so I can show here uh, in this tool like how we we build stuff. Um, for instance, uh, you can define different things about the game uh, for each row, like each segment where you stop. Uh, in this row, you can see that y we have like different settings for the cylinder, how the cylinder will, will behave uh, during that, that part of the game. 
So we have like different configurations here for different moments uh, in the game. Usually we, we only use this one, the uh, Berserk. Basically that says how, how aggressive the, the cylinder will become um, when it's in its Berserk mode, which is when you stray really far from it. And it gets all glowy and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. So for parts of the game that we want to be a little easier, or maybe maybe the terrain is harder to to traverse, then then we tone it down, and for other parts we make it more aggressive. And we also have this little flag here that says "Block Mothring." That that's the internal name of the Sushkarg. So for parts of the game where we don't want it to be bothering you, the yeah, that that's what that flag is for. And let me see. Um, I can also show other stuff that we do the, with this. Like we can just paint different biomes here. Like we could paint some desert there. Oh, oh, and that little red square that popped up right now uh, is an indication of the tool that that you made a mistake because we um, basically you can't have a tile that has more than two different biomes on it aside from water water is an exception but that that's done because we we uh, for performance reasons we can only mix two different biomes on on a single tile because otherwise it would be like really expensive um, to blend be between several different biomes in in just one tile Jimas is asking, is this map in the engine responsive? Like if you change something in there, will it change the positions of the assets as well? Yes. Yes. Uh, I can, yeah, I could just basically, uh, uh, yeah, I, I'd rather not show it right now because the load time is really slow for uh, loading uh, parts of the game. But we could just move a, a different tile, and we can just move this, for instance. And if, if you load up this part of the game, this uh, mountain range here will be shifted one tile. Can to you make the, it so there's right. dead space in between things that shouldn't be? Are you cutting the treble off from any escape? No, not exactly, because uh, like I mentioned before, if if all this empty space here is actually filled in by by any rules, so all the undefined space is basically you saying uh, just put whatever in there. <laughs> so okay, yeah, it will giant pit. Right, it could put a giant pit in there. So when we don't want it to be possible to put a giant pit, we have to put something else in there. So yeah, you can just move stuff around. You can also rotate stuff like mega tiles. And yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know what else I could show here. I, yeah. I purposely modified the editor so it doesn't show anything beyond the, the parts that uh, are shown in the beta. Ah, excellent, excellent. Okay, well, let me ask you a couple questions and maybe this will inspire you to show other areas. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Um, during the beta, a lot of people were doing unexpected stuff with the barriers. What was that like patching those out? Well, that was pretty hard. Um, mostly because there were like several different glitches that, that were being triggered in different cases. Uh, sometimes it was, uh, we yeah, we found the bug that basically if you timed it really precisely when you exited the, the barrier, it could leave the, the cylinder stuck with no way to move. And then, it, yeah, there was like a, a very slow, no, not, not low, uh, short, a very short time where I think it was one second basically uh, that you could, it was basically waiting for something to load and if you exited the barrier at that precise moment then 
uh, the, the, the cylinder didn't know what to do. And there was uh, another bug that if you saved outside the barrier, then the game, when it loaded back up, it, it just uh, assumed that you already passed the, that part and just uh, let you keep going. You all tricky people found that out. Thanks for the bug reporting. <laughs> yeah, that was really helpful. We wouldn't have wanted that in in the initial release. No. Okay, here's another one for you from Jintan. Uh, were there any instances where the art assets, animations, and code just didn't want to work together? Yeah. Uh, basically a lot of the stuff uh, had had to work a lot uh, we, we had to work a lot to polish the the movement of the creatures for instance um, the the inverse kinematics used to sort of place the feet uh, uh, on the 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 ground correctly so so it doesn't uh, flip on some parts or, or look really awkward uh yeah that was a lot of work to get uh working correctly okay oh, uh i i remembered something that i wanted to show here the, i mentioned that we only had oh wait <laughs> sorry i popped into a breakpoint there uh i mentioned we can only blend two biomes uh on each tile uh, so i can show what it would look like with different uh, biome mix here. Uh, let me see. Mix. And it's loading a bit. <laughs> no worries. OK, here's one that everyone wants to know, but <laughs> you guys know what we're going to say. Have multiple manual save slots been implemented, or will that be at all, or when would it be? We don't have that uh, planned for the initial release. It, it's not that it's super difficult or anything. It's just that we haven't had time to get around to it with, with all the other stuff that we have to work on. So it, it would be something that we would like to add uh, after release, though. And there you go, guys. You know the rules. If you want something, ask for it a lot. And then the more of you ask, the more likely it is to make it into the post-launch stuff. There you go. Okay, uh, <laughs> another question about things you're doing from Tintan. Um, I believe they probably read our newsletter where we were super excited to announce the Gold Master of Xbox. And they were wondering, um, as a programmer, can you share stuff that you did that you've been working on like these last few months as you're kind of polishing and optimizing? Sure. Um, a lot of it's basically been optimization. Uh, we, for instance, we found recently that some uh, parts of the game, especially in the, the, the final parts of the game, were not running super well on, on the Xbox. Mostly, uh, we, yeah, we had to pinpoint uh, the, the exact causes of it and, and optimize it as best as we, as we could. We we found that a lot of parts of the game that we made using blueprints, which is the the visual scripting in Unreal Engine, didn't run very well on on consoles. But since a lot of the game is uh, built with that, we can't really uh, translate all of it into C plus plus. So we have to focus our efforts on on the show up as as the most most um, expensive in terms of processing. And yeah, lots of really small uh, small bugs that we've been fixing and just general polish. Nice, glad that that's all fixed. I'm sure our console people are glad to hear that it's all running smoothly and as it should. I hope so. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm gonna load up the um, the um, game itself, so you can see how this all comes together in in the world. Just 
just gonna thank you Camilla Gus complimenting on the demo and then they can't wait for the final release yes later this year we're looking forward to announcing the exact date getting ever closer Sarah Miss Panchu asks, who is your favorite elder in the beta? You're trying to get us to spoil this. I know, Sarah Miss. You want him to name an elder you haven't seen before <laughs> from the beta. Look out for the trick, Danielle. Uh, I, I'm reloading the, the editor because um, I, I got a message that said that my audio was being cut off. So I, I think it might have been because I opened up a really sort of processing intensive part of the editor when when you build new materials it, it starts uh eating up cpu so it was probably cutting off our our stream a bit gaia they said it sounds much better now perfect yeah so that was it um yeah, Sorry, Sir well, Miss. I'm teasing you. I know you're not trying to trick him into giving an elder, but it could be. It could be true. <laughs> okay. And this will take a, a little while. It takes at least 30 seconds or so to load up the, okay. the entire game. So now we'll see everything that you just did in the editor come physically playable. Right. And we'll see, I'll show how the the rest of the world got filled in uh, the parts that weren't predefined. Excellent. That'll be fun to see. Is it thrilling to, like, you kind of building all these pieces, right? And then the first time you load it up and then you see it as a reality you can run through, that must be quite interesting. Yeah, it was definitely. When we started up, we only had like a few pieces. <laughs> um, and yeah, it suddenly starts coming to life when you have a, a lot more pieces to play with. Okay, okay so, so it lets you run around in the sky so you can see it all from bird's eye view? Yeah, this is basically now what we were looking at on the, the flat version. So here you can see the, the same edge colors as before, like the, the green, the red, the blue. And as I mentioned, like the blue uh, edges are basically arbitrary shapes, but they just match up uh, because they're, they're pre-made sets of tiles, like these, these mountains here. Oh, very neat. And I don't know if that text is readable, but uh, it basically tells you information about that tile. It tells you what the edges are. We also use uh, letters to indicate them. So the A is the red uh, edge, the B is the green edge, and the C is the blue edge. Um, and you can see a whole list of um, things there. Uh, the, the first one is what we call the metadata. So it's it's basically what tile that is, wh what specific tile. And the others are what we call layers. So basically you can have um, a single tile have different variants, different parts of the um, of the tile that may appear or not, depending on certain rules, on, on the world seed, on the position. Um, so you can see there uh, one that's called the Elder Plug. That's basically, is it's because this tile also has an, an entrance to an Elder Cave, but when it's not being used for that, that purpose, then it has to have like a, a plug that covers uh, where the the entrance would be okay they're, they're asking about the recipe recipe shrines i don't know if you can see like the letters from the tiles that you put down or if it indicates you know where one particular one was but they're asking what that is and they're not familiar with the term oh the recipe shrines oh yeah uh i think 
that's that would be kind of a spoiler if I mention exactly what that means but you've seen it and you might uh, I yeah I don't know if there's an in-game name for it but I think it would be called an upgrade shrine okay yeah is that clear guys He's yeah, that's. Run over to it, but it's can, it's where you where you update uh, upgrade your your stat. Yeah, I, I, I'm not gonna explain <laughs> what why it's also called the recipe shrine, but you can probably guess. So yeah, asking uh, if you're having fun creating these. Yeah, yeah, it was really fun making all all of this. It's probably my favorite project that I've worked on. Uh, one, one thing that you can see here in the editor that you don't see in the game is you can actually see the game loading in. You can see parts of the game loading in. You see these blank spaces. And that's really just because the editor is slow, but it allows you to, to see what, what you would normally never see in the game. Okay, so are these the ones that it's procedurally generating that aren't defined by you previously? Um, some of them are. Uh, the the ones that you have that have the, that text um, in magenta are the ones that are pre-placed, and any others are basically generated. Like you can see, this one has a white uh, color text. This one has a black color text. That's because we, we use uh, what you might call a checkerboard algorithm. So basically we fill in the what would be the, the white spaces on a checkerboard first, and then, uh, then we fill in the black ones, uh, because the white ones you can basically just pick any tile at random because they, they won't have any predefined neighbors, and then the black ones you just find whatever tile fits in with the, the ones that are around it. Very neat. And we also have yeah. uh, special rules for the coast uh, coastline tiles. You, you can all, all only pick tiles that would be appropriate for a coastline. They're concerned that you don't have enough water. <laughs> oh yeah. So can you die as like a... Yeah, pathetic? sorry. I, I mean, really? Oh no. Yeah, I just, I just pressed a, a cheat to give myself a full water. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Now, if you wanted to change any of this, you would have to jump back where you were before. At yes, a game, right? and, and reload the game. And and some parts of it might not update because um, basically once you once a segment of the world was predefined, then it's also stored in your save game. So if it was already defined as something in your save game once you load it up it won't uh, sort of re generate it so you usually save this step to the very end when everything is perfect the way you'd like it right or, or we just start a game from scratch uh, we have um, basically uh, little scripts that allow us to start the game from different parts in, in the story. Uh, so we, we don't have to start the game over from the beginning every time that we want to test a, a specific part of it. Okay. Oh, an um. another thing that I forgot to mention is that you can see things in the, dif in, in the distance, like the um, these large avocado-like <laughs> trees and, and the, the forests and the mountains. And that's because uh, for each tile we also have them split up in two parts. Basically one part of it is uh, what you can see at a distance and the other part is uh, the, the terrain itself, all the creatures in it stuff that you will only see when you're pretty close to it. They're asking what the giant pink barrier is behind you, kind of to your right. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a good question. That is because, as I mentioned, each of the tiles that are predefined 
has a magenta text. So basically what you're seeing there is Oh like, my gosh, the horizon. Oh, wow, cool. Yeah, it's basically every tile that's predefined in the entire game until the end. <laughs> Lovely. So the rest of the game world only defines uh, in a certain area around you. So as, as you can see, there's some te text there, like uh, sort of transparent, but it, it only starts popping up once you actually move there. Is it generating based on proximity of where you're walking? Yes. Maybe, maybe if I shift uh, upward a bit, you can see more of how it's generating. Yeah. There you can see where it's loading the um, the far tiles, like uh, the, the the these avocado trees there that are popping in. The normally you wouldn't see them pop in because the loading in in the game is much faster but you can see how it's loading them up right and and once it's done with the the far uh, parts of each tile it starts loading in the near parts down here and so we have materials that uh, blend um, the far away stuff with the close stuff so for for tiles that have like these um, really large mountains and things like that we have sort of placeholder mountains that are in the the far layer for that tile and then we have the actual real detailed mountains that are that are only loaded in when you actually go there ah you can see the cylinder as well oh right <laughs> yeah And as you might see, it's it doesn't seem to actually be infinite here <laughs> from this distance. <laughs> but in terms of the game, it is because it's basically uh, shifting <laughs> the the cylinder in a way that's not actually noticeable uh, each time you move. So you could, in theory, just keep going and and not notice uh, as it shifts along with you. But yeah, it's a lot of game dev trickery. Roboxel says they love how their footsteps sound. <laughs> yeah, it's weird that it, it's making footstep sounds in the middle of the air. <laughs> oh, a another thing that we have here is that the there's this um, sort of fake ground. The, that sort of gives the the illusion that there are all these mountains in the distance and and it takes information from from the biome information basically to color it so in in the parts where there are when there is ice biome it will sort of have this bluish uh, hue and and different textures to it and it will uh, color the mountains and as you approach these fake mountains, you can see that they start going down and becoming more flat. And that's where the actual detail in the tiles would start loading, so you wouldn't notice the, the transition so much. And you can see the same thing happens to the water. Like, there's no actual water <laughs> loaded there. Oh. Yeah, so I'm showing all the smokes and mirrors here. Very nice. Guys, ask your questions if you have them. Looks like you're stunned by the beauty of the editor.
yeah, if there are more questions about this part of the editor, we can keep going with this, or maybe I can show some other stuff that people might be interested in. Okay, yeah, they seem to be open to that, and whatever you want to show would be great. Okay. Um, okay, let me go back here for a second. I'll just open up one of these tiles. So basically here we, this is uh, sort of how we define each tile. So here you can see this is the main map for that tile. And this is what we call the, the far layer, which has uh, like trees that you can see from a distance, the mountains, etc. And here we have what we call the optional layer sets, which are basically just things that can come up at random or sometimes not random like this one load chance basically it, a one means that it will always be loaded so for this specific tile we had this is um, a version of this tile that is used in the tutorial so it's basically reusing assets from a tile that's used uh, all across the game but it adds this optional layer that's always loaded that only shows up uh, in the tutorial. So that allows us, uh, us to s sort of reduce the work. We can uh, specify only what we need. And here we also have uh, things like what biome the, the tile belongs to, and here we define what the edges are, what the edge types are so so they match up in shape correctly uh, the probability that it will show up uh, and here we also have uh, stuff like uh, how it shows up in the world map like the the map that you get uh, inside the pyramids so, yeah so that allows us to uh, represent pretty much any tile inside the map so the map is generated procedurally from the same tiles that the world has instead of us have it having to manually update uh, a map each time that the design of the world changed, for instance. Okay. They're, they like this. They said they would be changing it all day long. I'm sure that's probably the antithesis of what you'd like to be doing. <laughs> At this point, yeah, pretty much. We avoid all unnecessary changes. And we also have, like, um, this part uh, of the tiles is what we call the director controlled layers. That is a really fancy name, but it uh, basically what it does is that it allows you to load layers based on uh, s rules. Basically, uh, we just have a, like a name tag, like maybe it's related to an elder cave, or uh, maybe it's uh, a Trebum house, or something else. So it, basically it, it gives it a meaning that this layer means something and then we can have uh, some sort of rule that controls whether that uh, that layer will be loaded for that tile or not. Can you control what type of creatures appear on each layer? Is that already kind of pre-built? Um, not directly. Basically... Yeah, we, we... let me show another tile, maybe one that's not so uh, specific. Mm, yeah, just some random tile. Uh, here you can see that there's a layer called Liquor Packs, so that's basically a layer that has um, a sort of pre-designed herd of liquors placed... Uh, li sorry, the liquors are the Glick Balls. Uh, and, and that can show up here, like, with a 50% chance. Uh -huh. And 
here you you have uh, another type of layer that's the mutually exclusive layers so that basically it, it will pick one of this uh, one of these in in the list but it will not load any of the others so that that gives you some control uh, of variants sort of you, you can have a, a tile that sometimes look, looks like this sometimes looks pretty different April Fools for 500 of them on each tile. The whole world's populated with wolves. <laughs> so basically what, what we do is uh, we have uh, the designers placed creatures uh, in the tiles, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they will show up. It's, it's basically um, more like a wish list you could say like uh, i i wanted to 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 spawn these uh, creatures but there are some other rules that also try to prioritize creatures that you haven't seen in a while so to give it more variety because otherwise it would it would just Ooh. seem too dependent on which tiles show up like in this tile you would always see like lick balls or always see the omnigram or whatever so it it, it, it will modify um, which ones which creatures it prioritizes in the tile depending on what you have seen recently excellent okay so there you go that, that's a really clever feature Let me see if I can... Oh, yeah, I, f I forgot. We also have this um, sort of older feature that we called missions. Uh, before we even had this editor, basically the whole world was um, much more freeform. Like, it wasn't entirely pre-designed. There, there wasn't, like, this start to finish thing where we painted the biomes and we placed some tiles by hand basically the only part that was like totally predefined was this part at the beginning and then the world just basically started generating biomes uh, that you would move from and it still had the basic the same basic story structure but uh, it would basically string together pieces of story um, but it, it ended up being too complicated people got too lost in in our user testing so we decided to switch over to this uh, more predefined uh, sort of flow to the story but one of the remnants from that is that we have these sort of pre-built chunks of um, world that we call missions uh, let me see where that. Yeah, I, I thought it would take me there, but it didn't. Uh, so this you might recognize. Um, oh, sorry, wrong file. This one. This is the part uh, of the game uh, that you can see close to the end of the beta, where the mathematician shows up and uh, sort of um, wakes up these uh, what are they called uh, cleansers and beholders and there's sort of these uh, pipe sort of ditches uh, yeah we internally that part is called the half pipes mission <laughs> And so we had this old editor that only let you predefine like a small chunk of the world. So this is like a, a primitive version of, of the other uh, world definition editor. Oh, wow. Yeah. Xenoraptor10 says they really can't wait for the game. One of their favorite parts in playing the demo was being able to have all new experiences with new trebums every time they replayed it. Hard to find games that replay that have story in it. Well, thanks. Yeah, that's n nice to hear. We really wanted the game to be replayable. That that was one of our objectives, but we had to balance that with people getting too lost. And that's why we sort of had to sacrifice a little bit. 
because it, with what we had before, the, the game could take like a very different path depending on where you went. Um, yeah, the, the surroundings would vary a bit more. But it could also uh, end up with situations that were like really hard to overcome. Like you would have maybe um, like a huge lake in front of you and the cylinder just pushing forward really aggressively and yeah, it could end up pretty frustrating. Yeah, the game's come really far, but it seems everyone is very excited for the launch and enjoyed all the betas. We do have an Xbox demo live right now. If you have Xbox One or XS, you can play that and uh, getting ever closer to announcing it. So stay tuned, guys, soon. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, I forgot another small feature I could show here is uh, a little thing that we added in the end to help optimize performance on consoles. Here you can see a little overlay that basically it, it it's basically telling the game to try to not spawn as many creatures in in the tiles that are darker or have more of this pattern. So it's basically trying to spawn most of the creatures along the critical path where where you would go. This is only for consoles though. We we're only sort of limiting the the amount of creatures uh, on consoles because PC usually runs fairly well. Anyway, it, it's not super noticeable. It's especially because these are the tiles that are really far out of the way usually or are in the immediate path of the cylinder like you won't really notice that there aren't that many creatures right as you're coming up to a tower or something like that. Neat. Okay guys, get your last questions in. We're coming down to our last five minutes here or so. Uh, anything left for Danielle today? I like it when you just run around in the world floating above it. That's the coolest part. <laughs> uh, oh, maybe I can show some other test maps that we have for creatures and, and things like that. Uh, Damn, I forget what it was called. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yes, they would it's, like to it's, see it's been a while. There we go. I think there was a question, I forget if you asked me this, but uh, it asked which one of the behaviors was more interesting to to implement. And, mm -hmm. and this is yeah. uh, one of the test maps that I have for the um, articulated angstock. This one was a very interesting creature to, to build. Cause it's it's basically not not a creature at all. It's a, a large sort of I, I don't know even how to call it, but a sort of a collection of pieces, and you can get all these really uh, convoluted <laughs> arrangements with it, uh, with very little uh, parameters. You, you can see how the they can be placed here. Like, Do you I have can... to define which one of these is an active, actual, you know, mouth rather than just a static part, or does it do that itself? It sort of does it itself. Basically, what you can do here, there's a parameter here that it says um, open segments. So if you leave that at zero, it's basically a dead plant. Uh, all of the segments are closed, all of these have like these end caps. But if you leave some open, uh, then it will generate some that are missing, like this. And those are points uh, where the plant can grow from, basically, toward you. 
Okay. And it knows only ones above ground, et cetera, right? Like ones that would be viable to actually move and not be blocked by something. Right. It, it will always uh, try to move toward you, but also avoid uh, bumping into the terrain and stuff like that. And you can basically just generate the variants of this and get different uh, arrangements for it. And you can uh, me. change the number to something insane like that and have like this huge, <laughs> Do it. huge plant. Obviously, this would not run very well on consoles and stuff like that, but... That is amazing. That's a nightmare. Yeah, and you can actually move uh, within it, uh, even this jumbled mess. <laughs> Obstacle course, wow. Yeah. <laughs> It's pretty crazy. The, this took a lot of work, but it was really fun to make. They say it's the Angstock Queen. <laughs> yeah, it could be something like that. And you can sort of control where it goes. Uh, I forget how you did that, but uh, let me see. Um, oh, I think. The editor sort of got stuck a bit. No doubt with what just happened. Yeah, I'm going to trim it down a bit. Uh, yeah, so basically you have this... I don't know if you can see it very well, but you have this box that you can... Uh, sort of move around. Oh, it's not very responsive, I don't know why, but this used used to work better. <laughs> we probably broke something. Oh, and I can't see it. We did just ask it to make a queen. Maybe it just won't go backwards. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, basically what this does is you can give it a space. Yeah, I think that works better. It will basically try to aim toward points within those box, like a random point within it. So you can sort of give it a more controlled shape. It will basically always try to grow toward uh, any random point within that box. So you can have a, a more targeted shape like this. Say I move it there, then it will grow there. And if I make it bigger, maybe along one direction, it will sort of spread out. So Ooh. that's so it's very organic. Uh, like we didn't really want the designers to have to hand place each segment uh, of the plants because that would be like very, very tedious. So it's basically just giving you some loose control over how you want the plant to be. Okay, I'm gonna take two last questions and then we're wrapping up. So whoever gets their questions in first, they're commenting on a massive weird structure. I think they just mean the mountain there. It does look strange to have little cubes coming out of it, doesn't it? Uh, I guess they mean uh, this sort of thing? Yeah, like the red cubes just coming out of everything. Uh, yeah, the, we, um, yeah, that's because uh, all of these objects can sort of be, they, they have to interact with the cylinder because they're fairly large. So if you're pretty close to them, it would be very weird to just see the cylinder clip through them. So those boxes basically allow it to allow those objects to detect when they're close enough to the cylinder to start um, to start actually checking if they're colliding with it. So it's basically a sort of optimization. The, before the cylinder comes into contact with those boxes, the, these objects 
don't really do anything. So that saves up uh, processing power. Nice. They're asking what the blue thing is. What blue thing blue. do you mean, guys? Oh, the blue upward arrow? Is that what you mean? Maybe? The arrow that's there. Kind of oh, this is just the. Um, they call this the gizmo. It's just the. Basically, the the tools for Unreal that allow you to just move objects. Uh -huh. All right, last question from the community. What is your favorite creature in the game? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was supposed to answer that. What is my favorite creature? Oh, well, I guess I sort of already answered that. Uh, this one, the articulated angstock. Ah, so you didn't declare your preference, but now we all know. No doubt, it's really neat how you can do all these things with it. Yeah, I think it's it's pretty unique. Uh, it's very different from the other creatures. It doesn't. Uh, yeah, well, for one, it doesn't have a. a fixed body it, it can't really move around except for growing so yeah i don't think i've seen anything like it in another game so i guess that's why i like it a lot very cool okay any last thing to share with them before we wrap up i i think we can leave it here uh leave something for future streams exactly excellent Okay, well, huge thanks to Daniel for showing us the editor and this perspective. I'm sure that he'll be back on again, but appreciate it very much. No problem. I really like uh, sharing this sort of thing. It's, uh, it's cool that people have an interest. Awesome. And for everyone else, we're going to link the Discord in the channel. Stop by and we'll have more talks after this stream and you can join the rest of our community there. We have another stream, not this coming Friday, but the Friday after. And we'll have another contest for that too. You can participate in. So thanks guys. And uh, yeah, don't forget to join Discord. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.